Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request as we go into the weekend. So uh, the question that was submitted is a client has established the following position. The customer goes long, 1 BFD, July 50, call at 2, and short, 1 BFD, July 40, call at 6. Now, before I do the reveal, there are eight things you'd need to be able to do when it comes to a spread. You have to be able to identify it. This is a spread. I'm long and short the same type of contract. You got to be able to determine credit or debit, expire or exercise, narrow or widen, max gain, max loss, break even, bullish or bearish. Don't hate the eight. So before I do the reveal, let's do the eight things. If you do these eight things and you've got my guarantee that whatever they want to know, you've got the answer. Now, what we're spreading is the difference in the premiums. But before I get started, I always like to say, what am I looking at? I'm looking at an obligation to sell the stock at 40 and a choice to buy the stock at 50. That's what that means. So, you know, one of the things you want to work to is getting good, good at contract specifications. That what I mean by that is you're not fumbling around, that that's an obligation to sell at 40 and a choice to buy at uh, 50. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna net the premiums. We're gonna establish the difference. What is the spread? So that too is money out. I like to use money out and money in. I don't like using pluses and minuses because you can transpose them, but there's lots of ways to do options. So if you wanna think of that as a minus sign, that's fine. I like to use dollars out, dollars in, you know, whatever floats your boat. Ultimately, we need to know that this is a credit call spread and our net credit is four points. Now, once we get that net credit, we can rock and roll because now we know we want the contracts to expire. If this is the position in your account and I'm your broker and I call you and say, hey, the credit call spread expired, woohoo, that means you get to keep the money. You agreed to be a potential victim. Nobody victimizes you and you go neener, neener, neener. By the way, had you done the naked call, you would have made six instead of four, but you would have been taking all kinds of risk. Now, narrow is the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it. That refers to the difference in the premium. So when I established, I did this for a net credit of four. So if I can close this out, for example, for one, I would make three. The most the difference can narrow to is zero when both contracts expire. At uh, 40 or lower, the 50 call is worthless, zero. The 40 call is worthless, zero. And that would mean it narrowed from four to zero and I keep all the money. Hardest part to get, don't need to get it. The next thing I said we got to do is gain and loss. Now, you're either going to have the gain or the loss, depending on whether it's a credit or debit spread. I mean, whether you're selling a call or selling a put or selling a straddle, or in this case, selling a spread, short of calls, short of put, short of straddle, short of spread, it doesn't matter. The best case is you agree to be a potential victim. Nobody victimizes you and you keep the money. Now, the gain and the loss in a spread always equals the difference in the strikes. All the action takes place between the strikes. I think of that 40 as my floor and 50 is my ceiling. And, you know, so that's what that's about. So there's 10 points to be made or lost. I just collected four. Now, I think that's easier that four plus something equals 10. So that's six. Now, after you get the menu done, then you can think about it. But, you know, worst case, I'm buying the stock at 50, delivering at 40, lose 10, got four or six. Now, if you don't get that, then you got to memorize it. Oh, the maximum loss and the credit spread is the difference in the strikes, 10 minus the cre uh, net credit, four for six. However you get there, right? Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is break even. We have a good memory aid device for break even and call spreads. Call add to the lower. The lower strike here is 40. We add the net premium, we get 44. I'm just gonna illustrate to you that indeed that is the break even. There's our T. Uh, the dominant leg is my obligation to sell the stock at 40. So as you can see here, if you get good again at the T and you get good at the uh, specifications, you can shop your answer set and know that whatever they offer you has to make the columns balance. And indeed, if I plug 44 in there in that box, it would balance. So I buy the stock at 44, deliver at 40, which I'm obliged to do. I lose four, I got four, I break even. I'm just illustrating that's the break even. We got to determine bullish or bearish. The way we do that is the larger premium dominates the position. In this case, it's the uh, short call. It'll always be the lower strike call that is the dominant leg. So even if it's missing premiums, we know the 40 call is gonna be dominant because lower strike call contracts 
always have greater premiums. So if it's a call spread, you look at the lower strike and that's what's driving this transaction. Here, the lower strike is 40. I'm short, that's the dominant leg. Short calls is bearish. That's important because we need to know where we want it to be in relationship to the break even. We want it below 44. Anything below 44 is profitable. Anything above that is a loss. All right, now the reveal. If you do the eight things that I've just suggested you should do, now you look at the question and whatever they want to know, you've got the answer for. So I would get in the habit of doing these eight things, practice, drill, and rehearse. Now, the question that was submitted says, in which of the following situations will the client have maximum potential gain? You know, what I suggest you do is project the answer before you actually do it. Just say, okay, well, in my mind, let me think about this. I think I make my best gain is when the contracts expire, I get to keep the four. So I'm looking for, I keep the four points. And that happens if the stock is 40 or lower and the contracts expire. So, okay, let's go to our answer set. Choice A says, uh, I'm going to make my maximum potential gain if the stock is trading above 48. Eh. Anywhere above 44, I'm going to be losing money. You know, good news, it's, it's capped. I can't lose more than six, but from 44 to 50, I can lose some money. So A is out. Uh, B says both contracts expire. Yeah, that would be great. If both contracts expire, let me just do that here. Let me get rid of that. Yeah, let me get rid of this. And if uh, both contracts expire, that's going to be a zero. And that's going to be a zero. And please note, if that happens, the difference in the premiums have narrowed from four to zero. That was the difference in terms of, let me get this uh, here. This is the difference. Well, let me get a smaller font here. So when we did the spread, the difference was four. And now the difference is zero. So we get to keep the four. That's the hardest part to get at, by the way, is this idea of do we want the premiums to narrow or widen, right? You know, uh, you can do that practice. I have entire separate lectures on that, but B looks like the winner. Both contracts expire on exercise. I keep four points. Uh, C, market is below 52. Uh, no. Uh, exercise, no. If they're exercise, that means I would be buying the stock at uh, 50, which I have a choice to do, and delivering at uh, 40. I certainly don't want to do that. That's by the way, that's my worst case scenario is there, right? That I, I get out of this thing by exercising my 50 call. Okay, so the answer to this question was we want both options to expire on exercise and we make our max gain of $400. So remember, inch by inch, your exam is a sense, yard by yard, your exam is hard, and I'll see you for the next explication request.